the follow-up to the most sold car in the UK for almost a decade. This is the new Ford Fiesta. Now straight off the bat, you have a lot of options. Like the last model, this Fiesta comes in both three and five door versions. And there are six different trim levels to choose from, from the entry level style to the rather fancy Titanium X. Then separately, there's this, the ST line. Now this takes the regular Fiesta and puts in sport seats, sport suspension, and generally has a bit more of an aggressive look and feel. And then there's this. For the first time ever, we've got a Vignali derivative of the Ford Fiesta. I think the Fiesta, but with leather on the inside as standard, a rather opulent panoramic sliding back roof, and a slightly higher price tag to match. Now, this isn't it. Next year in 2018, we've also got the hot hatch for 200 horsepower Fiesta ST coming out, as well as the active crossover, the first ever crossover version of the Fiesta. That's a lot of Fiesta. But back to the present, and today I'm in the five door titanium version. Now Ford claimed this Fiesta is the most technologically advanced small car on the market. But before I get to all the fancy tech stuff, let's review some of the basic practicalities. First of all, the space. Now up here, I'm not exactly lacking for space. I've got good headroom, good shoulder room. There's a good width across the cabin. So I'm not gonna be bumping into uh, whoever sat in the passenger seat. But what I did have a bit of a problem with was actually getting in and out of the driver's seat. I felt I had to sort of clamber under the steering wheel slightly. And it's not at all held by the fact there are no grab handles, either in the front or in the rear. Ah. The good news is I fit. The bad news is it's not all that comfortable. And I'm not even that tall, I'm six foot. The driver's seat set up for me. You've just seen me clamber into the back. And as you can see, not really much space at all. If I was gonna be the back seat passenger in this car, I'd want to be behind the front passenger and I'd be arguing with them all the way to push their seat a bit forward so I can have a bit more leg space. The boot is okay, but not massive. There will certainly be room for the weekly shop and you can drop the boot floor to eke out a bit more space. But if you do so, it will leave a large step, making it a bit tougher to load in big heavy objects. So the titanium level spec retails at just over 16,000 pounds. So what do you get for your money? Well, the highlights include this eight inch screen with Bluetooth and sat nav and smartphone integration in the terms of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You also get things like cruise control, rain sensing wipers, automatic air conditioning and traffic sign recognition. Now, sort of sitting back, everything looks quite modern and quite swish, but as soon as you start to get up close, you notice it's a bit of a mix. So as an example, the steering wheel and the handbrake in this level of car has this sort of lovely leather trim and everything feels solid and stable. But say open this middle compartment for instance, and you see this rather rough round the edges workmanship. And if you happen to give it a wobble, the entire central console is actually quite flimsy and not very solid at all. And then you start looking around the rest of the cabin and you notice things like this. I mean, this isn't even a typical hard scratchy plastic. This just feels, light and cheap and doesn't really feel in place for a 16,000 pound car. In a recent survey, we asked people what they wanted from a small car and above everything else was value for money and being easy to drive. So is this an easy car to drive? Well, I think so. Starting with the cabin layout, I've got quite a lot around me in terms of controls and screens and information, but you know what? It's actually quite well laid out. Everything's within reach. There's nothing sort of hidden behind the steering wheel. And while, say, on this screen in front of me, there's quite a bit of information, it's actually quite quick to gain familiarity with it. Now the centerpiece of the titanium spec is this eight inch color screen. Now I've been using it for a bit and I quite like it. Uh, it's bright, it's colorful, and using the sat nav uh, that comes as standard with this car, you've got your pinch to zoom and your swiping gestures as you would do on a smartphone. So it's quite familiar, quite intuitive. The only thing I didn't like about it is that there is no sort of home key or um, shortcut keys to your phone or your navigation to your music actually on the console itself. They're all sort of soft buttons on uh, the menu. So you, you have to really take your eyes off the road just a little bit in order to be able to switch between the main functions. We know from our survey that small car owners spend on average about half their time in towns and cities. So a good small car needs to be able to cope with stop start traffic and be adept at maneuvering. This car is pretty easy to maneuver. I did mention before there's a bit of weight to the steering wheel, but that doesn't mean you have to 
wrench it over every time you do a three-point turn or a parallel park. Uh, the turning circle is also quite good, so um, turning around in a tight space shouldn't be too much of a problem. Don't fancy parking it yourself? You can pay a bit extra and get Ford's self-parking feature. When we tried it out, it was a bit temperamental in selecting a spot, but once it did, it parked itself quite neatly and quite quickly. The system can perform a perpendicular park like you can see here, a parallel park, and can also bring you back out of a parallel parking position. And there's plenty of safety tech too. Even the most basic Ford Fiesta now has lane keeping alert and rear seatbelt reminders as standard, which is great. But a key technology that Ford is promoting is called pre-collision assist. This is a system that will detect if you're about to crash and will apply the brakes for you if you haven't already. This system is a key part of Ford's claim that this small car is the most advanced on the road. The only problem is it's not standard on any trim. And we think people who've already spent over £19,000 on a Vignali edition may feel irked to have to spend another 200 quid on an additional safety system. Now we know from our survey that value for money and keeping running costs low is also important to small car owners. And there's some good news. The fuel economy figures for the Fiesta uh, tend to be between 50 and 60 for the petrol versions and around the mid 80s for the diesel versions, which is quite impressive. Um, but which tests are a bit more realistic than the official ones? Uh, so we won't really know how much petrol or diesel this car uses until we get it into the lab at a later date, at which point we'll present more realistic figures in the full review on which.co.uk. So what do I think of the new Fiesta? Well, I think at its heart, it's a good all round small car. It's easy, but not dull to drive. It has some practicalities, even though the rear seats are a little bit cramped and it can be a bit funny getting in and out of the driver's seat. When it comes to value for money, there are some tough considerations to make. The more sort of upmarket versions of the Fiesta are sort of priced alongside, say, a souped up Audi A1 Sportback or a Mini with a couple of the optional extras on it. So you're going to have quite a lot to contend with in the more sort of luxury small car area of the market. And added to that, you don't get that advanced safety system as standard. Either way, there are so many trims of this Fiesta and a few optional extras to consider that when you go to a garage, you're really gonna have to do your homework to make sure that you get the car you want at a price you can afford. Will the Fiesta sell well? Undoubtedly. But will it match the previous volume of sales? I'm not entirely sure, but time will tell. But this is just my first impressions. We're gonna get the Fiesta into the Witch Lab at a later date, and we can run it through our full suite of tests to determine just how good it really is and find out if it's got what it takes to be a best buy.